Ah, uh, Pokemon. It seems that it has taken the world by storm these past couple of years. I mean, Pokemon X and Y bringing the main Pokemon games into 3D. Then the remakes of Ruby and Sapphire. And then Pokemon Sun and Moon being announced with the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. And now the extremely popular app, Pokemon Go. Pokemon is on fire right now, and with everyone making Pokemon videos, I thought I would join the fun. Heck, I even started a Pokemon Nuzlocke on my gameplay channel, and I have even fallen into the Pokemon hype and have played Pokemon Go. But I got interested in something specific because of Pokemon Go. And that one thing is the Pokeball. In the app, you don't battle wild Pokemon, you just throw your ball and catch them. For whatever reason, this got me thinking about the Pokeball. The Pokeball is a loved item in the Pokemon fanbase. Whether you use it to capture Pokemon, or as desserts, engagement rings, or even undergarments. The Pokeball is loved by lots of people. But what if I told you there is a reason to actually hate this item? Now stay with me here. Well, if I told you these Pokeballs don't only capture Pokemon, but also indoctrinate them? Let's look at the evidence. Let's begin with what a Pokeball is and where it came from. A Pokeball is a type of item that the trainer uses for catching and storing Pokemon. The technology of a Pokeball is unknown and has evolved through the centuries. The basic mechanics are simple to understand, as in a Pokemon battle, once the opposing wild Pokemon has been weakened, the Pokemon trainer can throw a Pokeball at it. When a Pokeball hits the Pokemon, the Pokeball will open and then convert the Pokemon into a form of energy, pull it into its center, and close. A Pokemon in this state is given a chance to struggle to attempt to break free of the ball and escape, being instantly reconverted from energy into matter. Should a Pokemon escape a Pokeball, the device will either be destroyed or will return to the trainer, who can attempt to once again catch the Pokemon. A Pokemon who does not escape the ball will be caught. Pokeballs are specifically constructed for Pokemon capture, transport, and training, as well as being physically difficult to escape from as they seal tightly shut as soon as the Pokemon is taken into them. It is said that the environment of a Pokeball is designed to be attractive to Pokemon. Furthermore, while it's not known how caught Pokemon perceives their time inside the Pokeball, the device is said to replicate a Pokemon-friendly environment that is designed for comfort. All of these factors strongly discourage Pokemon from escaping escaping their Pokeballs. The invention of the Pokeball occurred in the Johto region, where apricorns grow. These fruits were cut apart and carved out, then fitted with a special device and used to catch wild Pokemon prior to the mass production of the Pokeballs that occur in the modern times under Silphco, the Devon Corporation, and the Kalos Pokeball Factory. According to the Encyclopedia Pokemonica, modern Pokeballs were developed in 1925 from the research of Professor Westwood of Celadon University. According to Pocket Monsters the Animation, Pokeballs were developed to allow various trainers to efficiently capture and train Pokemon, and relatively little risk to themselves, as the act of training a Pokemon often results in severe injuries and even death. It also claims that the Pokemon Primeape and its notorious violent nature was directly responsible for the their creation. So now that we know about the Pokeballs, we can look into the theory on how Pokeballs may be brainwashing our cute Pokemon into loving us. As stated before, Pokeballs were made to help capture and train Pokemon safely. These Pokeballs help prevent injury and even death. So this is a good thing. How could I possibly come to the conclusion that these Pokeballs would do something terrible as brainwashing? Well, let's compare Pokemon to animals in the real world. There are of course countless records of animals in the real world avoiding capture from us humans. They will either run away or attack upon us humans trying to capture them. Just like Pokemon do. You notice how Pokemon in the game don't just come up to us and love you and decide to be with you? No, you have to fight them to weaken them and then capture them in some small round device. In the real world, we use animal tranquilizers to knock out animals and capture them. We then take these animals, or Pokemon, away from their home and freedom in the wild and use them for our own needs, whether that's fighting or moving furniture. Now continuing with us capturing a Pokemon that does not want to be captured, why would Pokemon all of a sudden like us after capturing it? Won't be angry that we forcefully captured it after attacking it? No, it wouldn't, because unknown to us trainers, the Pokeball brainwashed the Pokemon after catching it to make it obey us. Now some may say some scenes from the anime may contradict this theory, but we are mostly focusing on the games here, as Pokemon started as a game, and also the anime isn't always accurate. Ash, telling your Pikachu to try harder doesn't win matches. I tried, it doesn't work. 
Now back to the theory. Some may say zoo animals obey us after we capture them, right? Well, a lot of zoo animals are actually bred in captivity, so they're a born being with us humans, and behind glass walls. And they really only act docile because they don't really have a choice. They are stuck there, and we also give them their only source of food they have. Trust me, they are only acting docile because 1. They cannot reach us to injure us, and 2. They want food from us to survive. And lastly, the animals don't want to be in a zoo. Ever wonder why you see animals in zoos pacing back and forth? Well, some animals may get a mental disease called zoochosis. Bears and big cats like lions and tigers will pace back and forth. Monkeys and birds will injure themselves. Giraffes twist their necks and bend their heads back and forth. And elephants bob their heads and sway side to side. This isn't natural behavior that would be seen in the wild. These are results of zoochosis. In the wild, elephants walk up to 30 miles each day. Day, bears are active for up to 18 hours a day and tigers and lions love running and climbing and will roam many miles to hunt but when these animals are imprisoned in cages or small enclosures at zoos they don't get to do those things that are natural and important to them instead animals in zoos are kept in cramped spaces with virtually no privacy and have very few opportunities to exercise or keep their minds active as a result they hurt themselves out of boredom as sad as this is it just shows that animals aren't that happy when they're held in captivity by us. And the same would go for Pokemon. They live in the wild being free and all of a sudden we capture them and their brains are forced into thinking that we are their leaders. Now some of you may be wondering that even if Pokeballs do in fact brainwash Pokemon, how does it accomplish this? Well, as said earlier, the inside of a Pokeball is meant to be comfortable to a Pokemon that rests inside of it. This makes it seem like a good place for a now weakened Pokemon to rest in. This makes the Pokemon feel more relaxed and comfortable with the idea of staying in a Pokeball. But I also believe that the technology and the Pokeball speeds up the process of domestication of Pokemon caught in the Pokeballs. Now everyone knows the domestication of dogs and cats in the real world, and we know that it takes decades or centuries of genetic changes to be domesticated. Dogs and cats aren't the only ones to be domesticated. In 1959, a Soviet geneticist named Dmitry K. Oh boy, I'm not good with names. Began secretly experimenting with breeding domestic foxes. More than five decades and thousands of foxes later, the program continues at the Institute of Coyotology and Genetics in Siberia. This just shows that animals can be genetically altered and domesticated. But how can we mess with genetics like this? Is it even possible? With genetic engineering becoming more and more advanced year by year, messing with genetics to make animals domesticated at a faster rate seems possible. And let's look at Pokemon and its technology. I don't even need to go that far. In the most recent games Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, after you beat the Elite Four, there is a mission where scientists plan on using a wormhole to send an asteroid to another dimension. And at the first game where Bill turns himself into a Pokemon, clearly in Pokemon, the technology they have is far more advanced than ours. So far advanced that they could have a ball that captures Pokemon and brainwashes, and maybe even speeds up domestication of said Pokemon forcing the Pokemon to look at the trainers as their leaders. Now, Hakai ever suggest that us humans would ever try to control animals or Pokemon? In 2013, researchers at Harvard University created the first non-invasive brain-to-brain interface, or BBI, between a human and a rat. Simply by thinking the appropriate thought, the BBI allows the humans to control the rat's tail. And in South Korea, researchers have remotely controlled the movements of a turtle using a completely non-invasive steering system. Humans are not afraid of researching on how to control animals. Now the big question. Why would we do this? Why would humans want to brainwash and force genetic altering on Pokemon? Well, this is something you should already know. Money and labor. We use animals to suit our needs every day. Horses for us to ride on, and horses for us to pull plows and other farming equipment. Oxen used to pull wagons, llamas carry supplies, and ponies and donkeys pull carts. And we could go on and on. We see this in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, as several machokes are seen moving furniture for the humans. Just like the animals in the real world, Pokemon are used for labor. And that's not even the worst of it. Your goal in all the Pokemon games is to defeat the Elite Four. To everyone, this is a big goal, and no doubt many Pokemon trainers' dreams. Truly, this is a spectacle. Pokemon fighting. Just like sports in real life, they generate millions upon millions of dollars. 
even some sports with animals. So many Pokemon trainers want to be the champion, just like how so many kids want to be football or basketball players. This is a sport for some people, and with Pokemon at the will of their new leaders, they don't have a choice. There is definitely millions of dollars at stake here with Pokemon battling, whether you watch it or are part of the action. Pokemon battling is a business. Whether you're spending money to watch a Pokemon battle in the crowds, or a Pokemon trainer spending money on potions to keep their Pokemon alive. And lastly, of course, the Pokeballs themselves. They are mass produced for anyone who wants to be a Pokemon trainer. Silphco, the Devon Corporation, and Kalos Pokeball Factory all mass produce these Pokeballs for one reason. To get the money from these trainers and Pokemon lovers who will unknowingly brainwash their Pokemon into loving them. These companies will make millions, heck billions off the crave to catch Pokemon, and all they had to do was find a way to domesticate Pokemon and make sure they can't escape from these Pokeballs. These companies can even get more slimy as they could allow some Pokemon to escape just so people could buy more Pokeballs. They even have the technology for the Master Ball. Why don't they release it when it clearly does the work? Well, why sell an item that can capture any Pokemon at 100% catch rate when they can just make Pokeballs that will most likely capture Pokemon, and if the Pokeball fails, you'll have to spend more money on Pokeballs. So to recap, Pokeballs were created to help humans capture Pokemon without injuring themselves, but companies started to mass produce these Pokeballs, and installed them so Pokemon can easily be genetically altered to immediately domesticate for the person who captured it. These Pokemon do actually want to stay free like how animals in zoos want to. So they run away or attack you, and you have to weaken them so they won't resist as much inside of the Pokeball. Like how we would tranquilize an animal in real life. And all this is happening so as humans can get labor from the Pokemon. The sport of the Pokemon battling is worth millions of dollars, and lastly so these greedy companies can keep pumping out Pokeballs and sell and make even more money year after year. After all this is said and done, that cute Pokemon you love so much does love you. But maybe they only love you because they had their brains and genetics messed with when you threw that Pokeball. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, this is just a theory. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Also, if you guys are still itching for more Pokemon action, click here to go to my Let's Play channel and see me try the Nuzlocke Challenge. And if you missed my last theory video, click here. Again, thank you so much for watching.